Good morning, everyone. My name is Al Lippert, and I'm the National Commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. I'd like to welcome all of you to the VFW Memorial Building on Capitol Hill for today's events. Thank you to all of our fellow veteran organizations for joining us and all the VFW members in attendance. We're gathered here today to discuss a couple of different issues that could affect service members, veterans, survivors, and caregivers if urgent action isn't taken. What we're here to discuss today is magnified by the meaningful date uh, on which we're gathered. 23 years ago, our nation was attacked and nearly 3,000 innocent men, women, and men and women were killed. That attack started a two-decade war that resulted in over 7,000 Americans service members killed in action and countless more injured from or affected by the course of their service. I'd like to take a moment of silence to thoughtfully reflect on the events of this day 23 years ago and all the lives it has changed since that fateful morning. Thank you. We're here to highlight the effects of improper budgeting for VA care and benefits. This issue has wide-ranging implications uh, for many members of our community. Veterans receiving disability compensation for injuries or illnesses incurred through service, survivor benefits for the loved ones of our veterans, student veterans seeking to use their earned GI Bill benefits, and caregivers who provide for their veterans in their later years of life. All of these folks, and more, will be affected if Congress doesn't step up to provide full funding for VA programs by September 20th. There is no time to waste. This is an urgent call. I'm proud to be joined by fellow uh, advocates to highlight some of the specific concerns we have and how that might affect those uh, we are here to speak on behalf of. I'd like to turn over the mic to my friend Robert Thomas from PVA. Robert? Thank you. My name is Robert Thomas. I'm the National President and Chairman of the Board of Paralyzed Veterans of America. I've been receiving a disability compensation for nearly 35 years, not only the compensation, but other benefits that's provided to help me along my path for a sustainable life. We have been throwing up red flags and telling about the shortfalls that's coming for nearly a year. These shortfalls are very drastic to the health care of my fellow colleagues sitting here as well as many other veterans throughout the system. Uh, these shortfalls cause bed and staffing concerns. Uh, we hear the term frozen in staffing positions, but these positions are not just being frozen. They're actually being outright eliminated, which causes a major concern for the, the SEI system and the VA healthcare system itself for veterans that come along later throughout life. We really want Congress to step up, get this shortfall taken care of, so that we all can be able to sustain a healthy, a healthy life and move forward with some of the things that we have already fought to have like the compensation, like the other benefits of, of being able to go in and get our wheelchairs repaired, being able to go into, into the hospital to have our wounds taken care of. All of these things are very vital to the life of somebody with a catastrophic injury like spinal cord injury or disease. So again, you know, we want to make sure that we address all of the concerns here. And I thank you all for being here and listening to what we have to say today. You guys hear me? There we go. I feel like I'm back in uh, the field. So I'm going to talk a little bit louder and then we're just going to act like we're at some range uh, so you can hear me. Um, my name is Jose Waters from Wounded Warrior Project. I stand here with all my fellow VSO partners uh, to express the need to fully fund the VA. And I'll talk in a bigger context just because the more likely outcome is that they fund it through a CR. 
With current funding for FY24 about to run out in less than 20 days, it is apparent to us that the CR is the solution that Congress will use. I'll say right now that a CR must be passed to fully fund the VA and DOD, but it can't be a long-term CR because we know what the long-term impacts of that is. Veterans' need for VA care specifically is growing tremendously. While my colleagues talk about their experiences, particularly on the healthcare system, I want to talk about something that the community collective did two years ago, the passage of the PACT Act, the largest expansion of VA healthcare and benefits for our community in generations. When we advocated for this, we also asked Congress to do one thing, to make sure that Congress fully funds and ensures that the VA has the right amount of resources and staff to successfully implement the PACT Act so veterans can get their care. Over the past two years, approximately 740,000 veterans, or new veterans, have enrolled in the VA healthcare system. That's a 33% increase over the last two years. VA estimates that by the end of this year, 127 million health care appointments will be made. Now, we all know about the VA underestimation and the necessity to fully fund with an additional $12 billion so that veterans can receive the care that they need specifically towards the end of FY25. To be clear, Congress has an obligation to provide oversight as we still need to understand how this happened. However, a long-term CR, or frankly any CR, that does not address the challenge that VA is facing now to fully fund the health care system is unjust to veterans. Freezing the budget at FY24 does not allow the VA to implement, continue to hire, and staff to provide the care that veterans have earned and deserved, specifically those exposed to toxic exposures. It means waiting longer. It means less providers, and frankly, it just means delayed access to care. I'll close with another issue that's important to everybody here, specifically to Wounded Warrior, and frankly, me personally, it's the Major Richard Starr Act. As we move forward, we urge Congress that the Major Richard Starr Act be included in any bill that's gonna make it through Congress. We owe it to the veterans who have sacrificed their life and who have lost limbs, and been severely injured as a result of their injury. So we urge Congress to also consider that as we move forward. Thank you very much. And it's my pleasure now to introduce a good friend, Randy Rees. Good morning, everyone. I'm Randy Rees, Executive Director of Disabled American Veterans Washington Headquarters. DAV is a nonprofit organization with nearly a million wartime disabled members almost all of whom receive VA benefits they've earned through their military service. But today, I speak not just for our members, but for all veterans. Veterans who receive VA benefits, their families, their survivors, and caregivers. In mid-July, VA announced it would not have sufficient funding in this year's budget to cover the cost of veterans and survivor disability and compensation benefits, as well as veteran readjustment benefits, all due to be paid on October the 1st. VA asked Congress to provide a supplemental appropriation of about $3 billion, which represents 1.3% increase in VA's mandatory funding for the year. Over the past two months, there's been a lot of finger pointing on both sides of Capitol Hill and both sides of Pennsylvania Avenue. That is not our concern. We're here today to say that no matter who you believe is at fault, what is absolutely clear is that veterans, their families, survivors, and caregivers share none, I say again, share none of the blame. However, they are the very ones who will be hurt if Congress, VA, the White House, and OMB don't solve this problem and solve it quickly. According to VA, if $3 billion in supplemental funding is not provided to VA, by September the 20th, just nine days from now, veterans and survivor benefits will not be delivered on time. That would mean six million veterans scheduled to receive disability compensation payments. 
500,000 survivors awaiting their DIC checks, and another 250,000 veterans and survivors expecting VA pension benefits would not receive this critical support. Some of these men and women rely on their VA benefits for most or even all of their income. Many live month to month on these checks. While Congress and VA and the White House have been debating how to fill the funding gap, many veterans are left to worry about how they'll just pay their mortgage, <clears throat> pay their bills, put gasoline in their cars, and food on their tables. We understand that Congress is preparing to act. We know that the White House and VA are ready to act as well. But as we've seen all too often in recent years, Divisive partisan politics often results in gridlock and nothing more. That's just not acceptable. There is not and never will be any acceptable reason for failing to deliver veterans benefits on time each and every time. Our message today is very simple. Get it done and get it done now. Thank you very much. At this time I'd like to introduce Jared Lyon of Student Veterans of America. Good morning. My name is Jared Lyon. I serve as the National President and CEO of Student Veterans of America. And on behalf of our 1,647 chapters with 854,000 student veterans, many of whom uh, rely on GI Bill to make ends meet, I'm honored to be here today. The budget shortfall that is facing the Departments of Veterans Affairs is not just a number. It's a real threat to the well-being of our nation's veterans, particularly student veterans and their families, for their access to education and training support. In July, the VA notified lawmakers of a nearly $3 billion funding deficit for the remainder of 2024 fiscal year. And the shortfall threatens the essential ability for veterans to make payments, including the compensation, pension, and readjustment benefits. These payments to veterans, especially student veterans, they rely on them to complete their education and transition into a successful civilian life after their service in the military. Specifically, the VA is requesting $520 million to cover Chapter 33 GI Bill payments for over 850,000 veterans and beneficiaries. This support is more than just tuition assistance. Considering that the majority of student veterans are working while they are in school, these funds are filling critical gaps to help cover basic living expenses, such as housing, utilities, groceries, transportation, and childcare, allowing student veterans to focus on their studies and their futures while making their transition to civilian life. For many, the monthly housing allowance, or MHA, is a lifeline, providing stability as they transition from military service to civilian life. For many GI Bill beneficiaries, the October payments will be their first MHA payments since school began in August. These student veterans have already paid their rent or mortgage, utilities, and other essential pockets, uh, expenses out of pocket trusting that their hard-earned benefits would arrive on time. When they check their bank accounts and find no deposit, it only creates financial hardship, but it also erodes trust in the system. This moment is about more than just delayed payments. It's about maintaining the integrity of the promise that we made to those who volunteer to serve their country. It is about the ability for veterans to trust in that promise. Additionally, VA is seeking 31 million to implement and expand education benefits following the Rudisill v. McDonough court decisions. Veterans affected by this ruling have uh, been left waiting for clarity about how their benefits will be applied, which adds to their frustration and uncertainty. The importance of addressing these financial gaps cannot be overstated. Veterans and their families depend on these benefits, not only for the education and training support that they've earned, but to support their daily lives as they make the transition from military to civilian life. Disruption in payments and unclear guidance about benefits can jeopardize their ability to succeed in the classroom and their training, and it shakes their confidence in the system that is meant to support them. Our veterans have already earned these benefits through their military service. It is now our collective duty to ensure that those benefits are delivered promptly, accurately, and with the dignity that they deserve. 
We call on Congress and the Department of Veterans Affairs to work together swiftly to close this funding gap and to ensure that student veterans are never left wondering if their benefits will arrive and be sufficient to meet their needs. Additionally, we urge VA to provide clear and timely communication if there will be delays in October payments. Veterans, their families, and survivors deserve transparency, consistency, and the security of knowing that they can rely on the benefits that they have earned. Let us remember that the GI Bill is most commonly accessed benefit of recently transitioned veterans. For many veterans, the GI Bill is the front door to the VA, and it's not just a financial benefit. It's a promise. A promise that, after volunteering to serve this nation, veterans will have the opportunity to build a better future for themselves and their families through education. And should they not return home from that service, that their survivors will also have the opportunity through education. It is our duty to uphold this promise. I'd now like to introduce my friend from the American Legion, Julia Mathis, Legislative Director, the National Headquarters for the American Legion. Good morning. Um, thanks to my colleagues for being here, and I would also like to thank the VFW for bringing us all together today on this very solemn day. And thank you to my fellow veterans for all their impassioned words about the looming VA funding crisis. We all stand together on this issue, and today we are here to bring attention to this outlandish budgetary shortfall that threatens our veterans and their families. The numbers from the Department of Veteran Affairs are deeply troubling. A $3 billion funding gap, a $12 billion shortfall for next year. And even more disturbing than those numbers is the toll that they will take on our nation's veterans and their family members. I have heard the concerns and felt the anxiety from many American Legion members over the announced budget shortages. And I don't have to cite the surveys because we've all seen them, and we all know right now trust in the government is in the basement. This financial crisis will affect veterans' disability compensation, caregiver compensation, community care payouts, everything. Mm -hmm. And many veterans and caregivers rely on these compensations to keep them from going off a financial cliff. With benefit payments at risk, the mental health implications are very concerning. Just imagine being a veteran whose lives paycheck to, who lives paycheck to paycheck and being notified by the VA that your compensation is going to be delayed in October due to these shortfalls. And imagine telling your children you can't buy school clothes or talking with your spouse about which bills you're going to pay this month and facing possibly eviction from your home. The mental stress brought on by these situations could lead some veterans into depression or hopelessness, even to the brink of suicide. And for moments like this, I thank God that the American Legion has the Be The One mission and the Buddy Check program. The American Legion's Be The One mission focuses on destigmatizing mental health treatment, encouraging connections, making it okay to say you're not okay, and empowering everyone to intervene to save the life of a veteran in crisis. And that ties in with the concept of the buddy checks, which the American Legion pioneered in 2019. I am grateful that the VA is conducting the National Buddy Check Week in October. And let's remember that anyone can do a buddy check anytime. You can do this with a simple call to check on a veteran, make sure they're okay, offer to assist with anything they need. And today we're here making another very urgent call. We're calling on Congress to immediately pass the legislation offered up by Senator Brown and Congressman, Congressman Garcia. And every day that we get closer to September 20th is another 24 hours of uncertainty for thousands of veterans whose financial lives depend on this. And every member of Congress has a moral obligation to protect these crucial benefits that our nation, nation's veterans have earned through their service to our great nation. The American Legion stands with and for all veterans, and we urge Congress to act quickly and responsibly and close this funding gap. Thank you for your time this morning. I would like to introduce an amazing leader, the Director of Government Affairs for Tragedy Assistance Program, Candace Wheeler. Good morning, everyone. I'm Candace Wheeler. I am the Director of Government and Legislative Affairs for the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. Today, as we honor and remember all those who have lost, we have lost in service to our nation before and since 9-11, we are reminded that their surviving families endure tremendous emotional and economic hardship due to the death of their loved one. 
To help ease the financial burden on these military and veteran families, the Department of Veterans Affairs provides a tax-free monetary benefit known as dependency and indemnity compensation, or DIC. Currently, more than 500,000 eligible surviving spouses, dependent children, and dependent parents of service members who died in the line of duty or from a service-related injury or illness receive DIC. These surviving families rely heavily on their monthly DIC payments to help pay for housing, utilities, food, medical and mental health bills, transportation, and basic needs. For some surviving families, DIC is the only financial benefit they receive in addition to Social Security. The current DIC rate for eligible surviving spouses is roughly $1,600 a month, which has only increased due to cost of living adjustments since 1993. TAPS and many of our fellow VSO partners here today know that strengthening and protecting DIC is paramount to our surviving families. These earned benefits are critical to their financial and emotional well-being. As Mary Ann Kerr, surviving spouse of Gunnery Sergeant Corey Kerr states, the money that I receive from DIC has allowed me to stay at home to care for my children full time. The loss of my husband and children's father has been very hard on our family and especially on my daughter. She is not only dealing with the loss of her father, but the trauma she endured while he was battling with the effects of combat trauma. As Americans, we have a solemn obligation to care for our surviving families. They are the backbone of our nation. It is imperative that we work together with Congress to protect their earned benefits from budget shortfalls. Even one day without these critical benefits for our survivors is a day too many. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Lieutenant General Brian Kelly, United States Air Force retired, and President and CEO of the Military Officers Association of America to the podium. Thank you. Well, first, it's obvious that we did this by height and I brought the tallest guy up at the end. Um, but first, let me just thank you all for being here today and joining us at, here today, particularly on today, right? Uh, a solemn day for our nation on 9-11. Uh, as Candace said, my name is Brian Kelly, and I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer at the Military Officers Association of America. Uh, I'm extremely thankful to the VFW for hosting and bringing us all together today, uh, and I'm extremely honored to be here with my fellow veteran service organizations and leaders uh, and partners uh, as we address this critical issue, which is the funding shortfall that the Veterans Administration has. As was already said several times, if not immediately funded, uh, we risk we risk uh, not being able to make benefits payments, monthly payments for compensation, for education, for pensions to our veterans, to our survivors, to our families. Um, we know this will severely impact, severely impact their livelihood and well-being. Our veterans should never, I say again, our veterans should never have to doubt the delivery of benefits that they earned through their service and their sacrifice. Fulfilling that obligation is absolutely the most sacred duty we have as a nation. Since the enactment of the PACT Act, as was already talked about earlier, the VA has provided more benefits and health care than ever before, and it continues to process claims and provide services to rec uh, veterans at record numbers. Congress and the VA, frankly, have done a really good job and worked hard to implement that landmark law and to expand the veterans' uh, uh, benefits to those veterans who were exposed to toxic exposures. But success comes with that, and the success in this case uh, means that all folks who are getting access now and the increases, uh, we need more money. Uh, the VA needs more money. And as was said many times before, it doesn't matter who you want to point the finger at, the fact is that our veterans need their benefits paid out. Any interruption in the VA's ability to pay veterans may have devastating con consequences on this community and may erode trust and confidence in the institutions who have pledged to support and care for those who have served uh, and given and sacrificed. I served for 33 and a half years, and I know there's lots of other veterans here as well who all know this. Uh, trust is built really slowly, but it can er erode really quickly. 
Um, the folks also know, and I think the Congress has struggled with and the administration has struggled with, the fact that in America today we're having trouble meeting our recruiting requirements. Our recruiters do a great job, but the folks who are here wearing these hats and the other veterans around the, around the, the uh, square here are the real people, are the real influencers who tell the next generation whether they should serve or not, and they tell the next generation whether they should ser serve or not based on their experience and how they were treated. And if you want to know what you can do to make a recruiting crisis work, erode their trust in conference and don't provide their pay and benefits. How our country cares for and supports our all-volunteer force in and out of uniform is one of the most important ways we sustain a strong national defense. And on a day like today in 9-11, you know, in those days after when we saw folks answer the call and volunteer, that's what we want as a nation. And if you want that going forward, you have to continue to build that trust. So today, we call on Congress to take swift action to prioritize the needs of our veteran community by coming together to secure the funding required to continue payments to our most important veterans. Our veterans and their families have given so much to our country, and it's time for the Congress to demonstrate a commitment by ensuring that they receive the benefits that they have earned. Thank you again for being here today, and we appreciate your attendance. <clears throat> thank you very much for all our speakers. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for everybody attending. Uh, that concludes <clears throat> our press conference. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, Up front. Question for anyone who wants to answer it. It sounds like there may be a deal of first for the $3 billion at least. What's the, I guess, what's the panic level at this point? What's the concern level beyond, you know, the, the longer term thing? Does it, does it sound like things are at least moving in the right direction or do you feel that there's a real possibility that we get to the end of next week and there is no deal in place? There, there is a proposed solution in place. However, until we see votes, votes that are yes, and then sent, uh, so the dollars are actually sent to Treasury, then that will relieve our uh, sense of urgency. Uh, simply a proposed solution is not enough. We need an actual solution. As for FY25, that's next week's fight. But right now, the 50-meter target is September 20th. Yes. Uh, Leo's question. So have you all heard that Congress will not take up that proposal next week? Is that why you're after urging them to or it's just a little... I don't know if we've heard they will or they won't. We're telling them they will. All right. That's it. Thank you all very much. Have a beautiful day.